I've been waiting for this one. This is a highly requested topic. We are making a Minecraft tier list of the best bases in the history of 2B2T, or as I like to say, oldest anarchy server in Minecraft. So here's how it's going to work today. Even though there are thousands of bases in this server's history, I've chosen 20 of the more famous ones. We're going to be ranking them compared to each other to see which one is truly the best. At the bottom here, you've got meme tier. This is for bases that were not really taken seriously during their construction, so they're mainly seen as jokes. Then you have D and C, which are sort of the middle tiers. They're all right. Then you've got B and A, which are the upper tiers. And then, of course, you have S at the top, which is the cream of the crop. No pun intended. So to start things off, we have Aureus City. It's a base that I was a part of back in 2015 and 2016. It's the last place I really considered home on the server. Now, even though I have a lot of fond memories of this place, I am actually going to put it in C tier because the builds overall were pretty average, you know? This will be a good benchmark for the rest of the tier list. Alright, next up we have the Valley of Wheat. The Valley is probably one of the most famous bases in the server's history. I mean, if you're aware of what 2B2T is, you've seen this place before. It is one of the older bases on the list, and despite it being older, it still really holds up to the present day, so I'm actually going to put Valley of Wheat in the A tier. I mean, just the theming of it, the importance to the server's history, it's definitely A tier. Next up, we have Point Nemo, which was the base built on the world border. It was the first of its kind. Even though it was built next to the border, the builds are pretty average there, so I'm actually going to put Point Nemo next to Aureus here in the C category. It's very average, you know? Now remember, all of the bases featured today, they're all fantastic bases, except for meme tier, of course. So I'm not calling any of these bases bad today, it's just when you're comparing the best of the best, obviously there's going to be a winner and there's going to be a loser. Next up, we've got Fitlantis, my old solo build. This was the first base ever constructed entirely via YouTube livestream. All construction was done on camera. No other base had been done like that before, so that's why it's sort of unique to the server's history. But at the end of the day, it's just a modified ocean monument, so I am actually going to put Fitlantis in the meme tier. You know, I never really took it that seriously. It was mainly just a concept. All right, next up we've got the Monastery, which holds the record for longest surviving base in the server's history at eight years, which is complete insanity. Now, the builds at the base are all right, they're nothing super crazy, so I am actually putting the Monastery in B tier, and some of you may be surprised by that, but here's why. Because the next base in the list is Avalisium. The same builders that built at the Monastery also built at Avalisium, and it was a major improvement. I mean, everyone at Avalisium did a fantastic job on the base. Now, of course, it was not fully finished, by the time it was griefed, so I am actually going to be putting Avalisium in the A tier. If it was fully completed, it could have been potentially S tier. So next up, we've got MOAK, the mother of all keeps, which was built by 2B2T legend Crowbar. I mean, just taking one look at this place, you can tell this is 100% S tier, so let's go ahead and put it on there right now. This is actually the only Crowbar base in the list today, because if we had any more of his other builds, it would just completely dominate the S tier. It would be completely unfair to everyone else on the list. So, we have only included one of his bases. Next up, Hermetic Lock's world famous spawn base. In 2017, this was an experiment that Herm did where anyone could come to this spawn base and build at it, or even destroy it if they wanted to. So, obviously, over time, it went completely haywire. So, for that reason, of course, we are putting it in meme tier. It was never meant to be a serious base, so of course, we acknowledge that. All right, next up, we've got Hardhat's Pyramid. Now, Hardhat constructed this a million blocks away from spawn many years ago. It is a very aesthetic looking pyramid, but at the end of the day, it's just not as sophisticated as some of the top tiers here, especially compared to like Mother of All Keeps. So remember, just because a base is famous does not mean it's going to be top tier, so we are going to put Hardhat's Pyramid in D tier. Remember, that's not an insult, it's still a really cool looking build. Next up, we've got Summer Melon. Now, this was one of the biggest bases of 2017. It was overall gorgeous. I mean, the steampunk inspired art style was really neat to look at. Like everything else on the list though, it was destroyed in an unfortunate griefing accident. But because it's thematically consistent across every part of the build, 
I am going to be putting this one where it belongs in A tier. It's definitely one of the top tier bases ever built on 2B. We're really getting the ball rolling here. We're at least halfway through the tier list already, and we've populated every category with at least one base, so we're killing it right now. And if you're enjoying the video, leave a like, and if you consider hitting that subscribe button, you're a legend. Next up, we've got Empire's Edge. Now, this base was constructed by Imperium, who at one point was the most powerful group on the server, but they've since gone inactive. I am not entirely impressed by this base. I mean, it's got really neat sections of it, but the whole thing just seems like a bunch of random stuff thrown together at a location and just calling it a base. You know what I'm saying? Unlike the top tiers up there, where they all had a consistent theme, this one just feels like a hodgepodge of stuff thrown together, so for that reason, I'm actually going to put Empire's Edge in the D tier. If it had like an overall theme to the base, it definitely would have been higher up on the list. Next up, we've got the Bodecan. Now, I had the honor of touring this base many years ago, and it was built by 2B2T legend Kane's Law. This base is gorgeous. There is no other way to put it. The usage of the space, the fact that it's entirely underground, the colors just seem to pop. Every portion of this base has such intricate details. It is absolutely deserving of the S tier. I would say it's one of the best bases ever built on 2B2T, and it's one of my personal favorites. Now we have Asgard 2, which was one of the largest bases of 2015 before it was destroyed. Now, I am actually going to be putting Asgard in the D category, because once again, it suffers from the same thing that Empire's Edge did, which is, even though it's got cool-looking parts of the base, it just seems like a bunch of random stuff thrown together, and even though I was a part of this base back in the day, I can admit, it's just not the best base there is. Next up is a base a lot of recent viewers will be familiar with, Imps Base. Now, even though Imps was one of the most iconic bases in the server's history, if you actually take the time to explore the individual buildings, you'll realize that a lot of them are just big, empty boxes. There's not a whole lot of detail in a lot of these builds. So I'm overall going to put Imps in the B tier. I mean, it's still a really aesthetic base, the theming is consistent across all builds, but a lot of them just lack that small detail that really sets apart the B tier from the A tier. Oh, it's time for us to talk about the big boy, Mew Mega Base. This is one of those creations where if you just looked at it, you would assume it was built using creative mode. You would have no idea it was constructed millions of blocks away from spawn on 2B of all places. But this is obviously S tier. I mean, the sheer amount of work that was put into this build is nothing short of incredible. Taking a little step back in time, we are talking about Ziggy Town now, also known as Ziggy Base. Now, a lot of you probably remember this base as having the Dead Space Marker, aka the Bedrock Comet located at it, before it was unfortunately destroyed. I am putting Ziggy Town in the C tier. I mean, the builds for their time were quite nice, but compared to modern standards, they're pretty average. They're nothing to really write home about, so that's why I'm putting Ziggy Town in C tier, despite it being a really historically significant base. Now we have Niflheim, which is the great ice dragon built by Doc Smurf many years ago. I had the honor of touring this base. It is still to this day the best snow-related build I've ever seen on the server. I mean, Doc and his building crew, they knock it out of the park with each base that they build, so I am putting Niflheim in the S tier. I mean, pretty much any Doc Smurf build from after 2016 is gonna be an S tier, so we're gonna limit him to one today. We're moving on to King's Landing now. I was actually conflicted about this one. Now, this base was destroyed in 2016 during the backdoor drama, so it's a pivotal part of 2B's history. I was originally going to put this in D tier because I felt it suffered a lot of the same problems that Asgard 2 and Empire's Edge did, where it was just a bunch of random stuff thrown together, but it does make more efficient use of the space and it's overall more pleasing to the eye. I would actually put King's Landing in C tier because even though it suffers from the D tier problems, it just looks too good to be in a D tier. I'm all too familiar with this next one, Wrath Outpost. This is the base that the Incursion used to take over Spawn in 2015. And I would know because I built part of Wrath Outpost. Now, I am going to say this, from the present day, looking back, it's just Obsidian. It's a pretty cool design, but it's just not as complex as the top tiers, so it pains me to do this, 
But I'm putting Wrath Outpost where it belongs, in the D tier. You know, that's just the way it is. How appropriate that the most famous end base is ending our tier list. Now, Space Valkyria. It is easily one of the most aesthetic builds on this entire tier list today. Without question, it belongs in the S tier. I mean, Jack the Ripper does a fantastic job with all of his builds, but his end bases in particular are spectacular. I still remember exploring the end and just randomly stumbling upon Space Valkyria, and I just couldn't believe it. I thought there was no way someone built this in survival, but Jack the Mad Lad actually did it. So this is it. This is my finalized tier list of the best bases on 2v2t. Now, if you disagree with me or you feel like I left out a base that I should have included, let me know down in the comments because I always love hearing what you all have to say. But if you enjoyed today's video, make sure to leave a like and hit that subscribe button. Also, make sure to follow me on my socials. So take it easy, FitFam. And if you plan to play, stay alive out there.